step over. Hi, Hi there. Tyler. Hello. Nice to be here. We're so excited to have you here. So for those of you that are just joining, this is Dr. Tyler Nordgren, and he is Green Canyon's first astronomer in residence. It's a tremendous honor. I've been coming to Grand Canyon for decades, it seems, and to, to finally get a chance to be here and spend three weeks as astronomer in residence is just an absolute delight. Fantastic. So I just want to give a shout out to Gina from Ohio and Tony from Indianapolis and Minji from Green Canyon and Donna. Thank you guys all so much for joining us on this beautiful Thursday. Um, it is about 84, 85 degrees today. Uh, we have some nice clouds starting to build up, so you can see those just right behind Tyler. But hopefully we'll get them on soon this afternoon. And we're really thrilled to be able to introduce Tyler. And if you guys have any questions for him today, mm -hmm. please put it in the comments and we'll do our best to answer it live. And on the other side, my name is Alyssa Ojeda and I'm the Marketing and Public Relations Manager for Grand Canyon Conservancy. So Tyler, how long have you been out here at Grand Canyon now? So I got out here uh, last Friday, uh, spent woo, about four, three or four really long days driving out from upstate New York. And oh my, the scenery is different. It is such a delight finally being out here back at the canyon. So for those of the people maybe who've never met you before, can you share with us what's your background and why are you passionate about dark skies? So I have, I have a PhD in astronomy from Cornell University and I, I studied dark matter and star evolution, and I traveled the world going to observatories. But in 2005, I had a life-changing experience at a national park. And it's where I learned that these are some of the last places that the average person can go out to see a dark night sky. And so since 2007, I have been traveling the parks, working with park rangers, park associations on helping share the beauty of the night sky with the, the, the traveling public. So I'm just so excited to welcome back some of our regulars too, Sabine and Trish and Doug. Thank you guys all for joining and Michael. Um, and so again, if you guys have any, if you guys even want to try to toss in some astronomy questions, let's see if we can stump Tyler. Stump the chump. Stump the chump. Give us your best work. Um, but while you guys queue up some of those, you know, I'd love to know what, um, so you talked a little bit about your experience there, but how do you feel like you're gonna take that background and those connections and apply it to your residency? So one of the things that, that I've already been doing is I've spent the last three nights out on the rim. Uh, when the sun goes down, I've been out with my camera setting up to capture photos the Milky Way over the canyon. And sunset is the time that people go out to the rim. They want to see the, that beautiful color in the sun in the canyon. And so invariably, somebody will see me, they'll see the name tag, the camera, and they'll ask, what are you doing? And I'll say, well, I'm Grand Canyon's first astronomer in residence. Let me know if you have any questions. And they always do. And they're the most amazing questions. Just a couple nights ago, a family out at Maricopa Point, uh, when they found out that, that I was an astronomer, they asked, uh, they got, I got questions about black holes, planets around other stars, what makes up our galaxy, and what would you see if you could see another galaxy or if you were in another galaxy looking back at the Earth. And those are, those are a delight to answer because everyone has questions and the universe is full of amazing things to be curious about. So Trish has our first question coming in live and so Obviously, we're a little biased to Grand Canyon's dark skies. <laughs> um, what other national parks have you experienced and any other dark skies you might recommend across the country for oh. people who can't just, you know, drive up here and experience the Milky Way at Grand Canyon? So in 2007, 2008, I did a sabbatical with the, the national parks and spent 14 months traveling throughout the parks, working with park rangers and visitors, measuring the darkness of the night sky. Um, first of all, you don't have to be in the desert southwest to see a dark night sky. I live in central New York right now. You can go up to Acadia National Park in Maine and see the Milky Way over Bar Harbor. You can go to Shenandoah National Park in Virginia or even uh, the Everglades in Florida. There's some beautifully dark places out there. But in terms of the darkest that I've ever seen, I'd have to say Great Basin National Park up in eastern Nevada is one of my all-time favorite dark places. Big Bend National Park down in West Texas. I still remember a night down there where I literally saw no sign that electricity had ever been invented. 
So those are some really stunning places. Granted, they are out of the way. So if you can't get to that, Joshua Tree National Park in Southern California has all of Los Angeles and San Diego within easy driving distance. Um, Yosemite is where I, I first had my life changed by seeing the Milky Way. So th those are some of the places that I would definitely recommend. So you hit on this a little bit. So to have the title as Grand Canyon's first astronomer in residence, what inspired you to come be a part of this program? I, I love the national parks. Um, one, of, one of the things that uh, I came up with about back in 2009 was that half the park is after dark. And that, that encompasses the idea that what the national parks have been preserving for the last 100 years, the, the landscape, the wildlife, the, the views, all of those almost by accident have preserved those other views that happen when the sun goes down, the night sky. And for me as an astronomer, I want to share with people what we know about our planet, our solar system, and our universe. And the place to do that is where people can actually see the universe and our planet. Uh, and so Grand Canyon is one of the premier examples of that. You can see not only space, but time just <laughs> 10, 10 yards away from a parking lot. And so what better place to, to, to share the night sky and, and what we know about the universe than here at Grand Canyon. And while you're here, so you have three weeks that you're going to be sitting at Green Canyon and experiencing the dark skies. How can a visitor interact with you or maybe follow along your journey? So there's a, there's a number of ways. If you happen to be here at Grand Canyon, uh, I'll be out on the rim taking photos every clear night. But I'm also giving a public program on July 9th at 9 p.m. at the McKee Amphitheater. Uh, we'll be doing another Facebook Live at noon on July 13th. But you can also follow along with me online. Uh, my Twitter handle is Night Sky Park. I'm on Facebook at Space Art Travel Bureau. My website, spacearttravelbureau.com, has all of my photographs and all of the poster artwork that I've designed for, for national parks all over the country. So uh, those are some of the best ways, and I'll be posting every single day that I'm here. And we're so excited to do that follow-up presentation with you as well. And I just want to share that Patrick had just mentioned um, he could just listen to you for hours and now he wants to come experience <laughs> the park after dark in the Milky Way here now after hearing you talk. Oh, so, thank you. And really, what are some of the goals of your residency? What are some takeaways that you hope to achieve? So one of the things I'm really uh, looking to achieve here is the, the work that I've done at most parks over the last 15 years has been maybe a weekend here or a weekend there. Here's a chance to spend three weeks really getting to know the park. Uh, watching the, the change in weather and lighting as the phase of the moon goes from full to third quarter to new and on to first quarter, you get the change in light in the canyon. And so I'm taking lots of photographs, but I'm also sketching. I'm going out and I'm seeing the park with my, my own eyes, which I mean, honestly, that's, that's the one astronomical tool everyone has when they come to the canyon. And so really getting a feel for what it's like to be here in the canyon after dark. And so trying to find if there's any better ways that I can share that with the public through photography, through artwork, and, and through my writing. And so this question is coming from Rick and he is curious, you know, have you had experience or any tips of ways we could maybe live stream or get some type of capture of the Milky Way at night to share that out? So one of the things I'm doing is I've got a, a Sony camera that is excellent for low light conditions. And I'm using that to, to photograph the, the Milky Way uh, and the, the sky right after sunset uh, for live streaming. Well, you know, it's, unfortunately that's really difficult because in order to capture that faint light of the Milky Way, what you really need is to have longer exposures, longer exposures than what our eyes do and longer exposures than what most film cameras or well, most, most digital cameras do when you're live streaming. So we're looking for those long exposures. So, um, you know, we're, we're, doing the best, we're doing the best that we can. And hey, tune back and let's, you know, one of the things I've noticed is that iPhones are really amazing now at capturing the Milky Way. Who knew? That's a good fact, you know. Rick, maybe next time I'm up here and I catch up with Tyler for his live program, I'll try to get some iPhone shots and see how that translates over. Um, but I've already gotten a glimpse of a few of Tyler's photos while he's here and uh, just one I think he got 
earlier Miracle Point that he was speaking about beautiful view of the Milky Way over and um, we're, we're excited to share some of those out during your residency and so my next question is more just a little bit out of curiosity so you are a, a photographer and a writer and an illustrator which would you gravitate to more what's your, really your passion you know uh, I've, I've, I've been an artist I've, I've drawn ever since I was a little kid and through college and graduate school I, I drew cartoons and there was a point at which I began to wonder what I wanted to do with my life. And at the same time I was doing that, I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to be an astronaut since I was five. So I had this plan that I was going to go to college and eventually on to, to, to become an astronaut. And somewhere around you know, my 20s, astronaut turned into astronomer and this art. And I began to wonder, well, which one of these do I really want to do with my life? And I kind of decided that uh, astronomy, science, had probably better job security. But, you know, okay, I became a university professor, astronomer at an observatory, but really I love art. I love all the different ways of communicating with people, not just through the written word or through video, but through art, photography, drawing, and really, I like, at this point I just say I'm a product of a liberal arts education. We are emotional beings and we respond to uh, the universe around us through a wealth of, of ways. It is not my intention to limit any of them. So this question is coming from Doug and he wants to know what is the best time of year to experience the full Milky Way? So you can see the Milky Way almost at any time of the year, almost. But it depends on the time of night you're interested in. For most of us, we're up in the evenings. And so if you want to see the Milky Way in the evening, the best time is really summer to fall. And that's partly because the brightest part of the Milky Way, the part of the Milky Way in towards the center of our galaxy, the vast majority of the hundreds or so billion stars that make up our galaxy, they are going to be visible in the evening from, fall, from summer on into fall. After about that, so winter into maybe early spring, it's the, the other part of the Milky Way, the part of the Milky Way away from the center of the galaxy that's visible in the evening. And there's not as many stars, and so you really have to be someplace dark in order to see that, like a national park. And for someone who is just wanting to maybe get into some more stargazing, do you have any tips or tools or things for just some backyard star parties? So my, my recommendation for, for getting into stargazing is, first of all, your eyes. Your eyes are the, the best instrument you've got for, for seeing the night sky, but you have to let your eyes adjust to the darkness. You have to let your night vision come. The best way to do that, well, the only way to do that, is to not look at any light, any artificial light. Do not look at your phone for a, at least 15 minutes, ideally an hour. Make sure that you're someplace without any light impinging on your eyes and you will see far more than ever you thought possible. Here at the Grand Canyon, I can go to one of these overlooks and even just 15 minutes, I can see the Milky Way with my naked eye. All right, beyond that, I recommend a pair of binoculars. Binoculars let in more light through these big lenses. Um, I've got a pair of binoculars that uh, have image stabilization and so you can click a button and it will hold those binoculars steady. If you don't have that, uh, find a pair of binoculars that you can put on, say, a camera tripod. And with that, you can look up at the sky and you can see the Milky Way, the Andromeda Galaxy, the rings of Saturn, the moons of Jupiter, and craters on the moon. After that, you're now getting into many hundreds of dollars and you're talking telescopes. And there, there's no simple answer for what kind of telescope would be best. Uh, it depends on your financial situation, but also it depends on you, what you want to look at, how you want to look at, what, what you're willing to get frustrated with. So it's, it's a complicated issue, but I recommend starting with your eyes and letting your eyes just adapt to the darkness. Thank you so much, Tyler, for that overview because it's so nice to see all the different levels on how someone can just experience that. And you know, some things that we've hinted to before is if you do need light, obviously get around and be safe navigating out to your backyard. Um, using a red light or things like that help so your eyes can adjust differently for it. And, um, anything else like that you recommend to have on hand? or Right, so 
Unfortunately, artificial light in so many places in our world today has made seeing the sky difficult. Uh, whether it's lights on our house, lights from the neighbors, lights on the street lights in our towns, or that city next door, or the city that you live within, all of these sources of light uh, shine into our eyes. They produce glare, they keep us from getting dark adapted, or they create a glow overhead. So even if you are dark adapted, the sky looks like an orangish glow and you can only see about 10 or 12 stars. That's the way I had it when I lived in Los Angeles. So I recommend getting to someplace dark. Maybe it's a state, maybe it's your backyard, maybe it's a state park, a forest, or a national park. Get someplace dark, lay out where you're safe, maybe in a picnic table, lay down on the picnic table. Or if you've got camp chairs, Make sure that your field of view has no light in it and just relax. Look up at the sky. Don't check the time on your, your phone or your watch. Just look at the sky and slow down and you will see the universe. So this question is coming from Julie and she wants to know what is your favorite season to experience at Grand Canyon National Park? <laughs> My favorite is actually winter time. And I like it because I love seeing the snow on the rim and looking out across the canyon, all those different layers have different layers of snow on them. And at that time of year, it's cold up here, possibly below freezing on the rim, but you can hike down into the canyon and it'll be like 50 degrees when you get down to the river. And there I spend a couple nights down at Phantom Ranch Oh, and you get away, you get away from the crowds, but also you get to feel the canyon is all around you. And it is just my most favorite time to be here. This question is coming from Marie, and you hinted on this earlier that an iPhone is really a device that we have in our pocket that can capture the Milky Way. Any tips that you recommend for trying to photograph it from an iPhone? I know that's a loaded question, but... So it's come about with the last few models of the iPhone and the Android that they have camera settings that will allow you to take longer exposure, say up to about 10 seconds or so. And what it's doing is it's taking a constant stream of photos that all get added together to build up that signal, to build up the light. Uh, the best way to do it is if you can put your camera onto a tripod, maybe have a, a, a little clip or something, or if you don't have a tripod, you can set it on a, on a picnic table and just point it out at the darkness, let it add up. I've actually, I've taken photographs of the Northern Lights up in Alaska. I've gotten the stars above the Grand Canyon and I've seen photos of the Milky Way that are just stunning. And I'm, I'm waiting to take one of those myself. I do just want to share, I'm loving seeing your guys' feedback in here, and I just want to share a comment that Mara had made um, about experiencing the full night sky stars over William. You know, it seemed like the sky falls down on you and she kind of lost her orientation, but it was like thrilling and amazing. And there's, a, there's a park ranger out at uh, Chaco Culture National uh, Historical Park, uh, GB Cornucopia, who once told me, the sky begins at your feet. And that is literally true. When you can get someplace so dark and so vast that you see the stars like this giant vault overhead coming right down to the horizon, and you know that, that half of our world you know, is overhead. And to be out at one of the, the viewpoints in Grand Canyon where you can maybe stand out at Mather Point and have the darkness beneath you and the stars overhead, uh, it, it is a, it is a experience unlike anything else. So in Richard too, he said the last time he was there was a 1990 an experience. It was so beautiful. So thank you, Richard, for sharing that. And uh, for those of you guys that are just joining again, we are just live at the South Emma Grand Canyon National Park. We are just right next to Verkamp's Visitor Center. Um, and I just want to give a shout out to Vicki and to Susan and to William. Thank you guys all for joining us in Candy. Um, I really appreciate you guys all joining us on this Thursday afternoon. Um, I think I got a couple questions. It is warm today. We're kind of in the high 80s and we are in the shade right now. So we're trying to stay out of it because if any of you guys caught our last one where the iPad and the phone overheated, we're avoiding that this time. <laughs> so thank you guys again. And if you have questions, feel free to put it in the comments. Um, but another question I actually have for you, Tyler, is if we do happen to have some, you know, we talked about just doing a star party in your backyard, but an amateur or even professional astronomers too, how is there a way that they can maybe connect their work from wherever they are to even the pristine night skies here at Grand Canyon? So one of the, the things I did when I was in the national parks uh, as part of my sabbatical was I, I was working on a book um, called 
stars above, earth below. Oh, hey, look what I happen to have right here. So here's my book. Look at that product placement. So the goal of this book was to highlight all the different ways in which you can experience astronomy in a national park. And I wanted to connect the research that I and my colleagues were doing to things that you actually found here on the ground. So for instance, you have all the layers of rock here, those geological processes. You know, those are geological processes at work on all planets throughout the solar system. And so by looking here at this canyon, we can understand about what might be forming a canyon on Mars. Or the, the dark sky here that we, we see. You know, imagine when you look out at these stars that you have overhead, current estimates are that virtually every one of those stars you see probably has planets of its own. So the research that we do, we can connect that directly to Grand Canyon in terms of its geology, in terms of its history, uh, its formation, but also in terms of what's visible when you have a dark night sky. Um, whenever you come to the South Rim of Grand Canyon, so I know you talked a lot about Phantom Ranch, when you're doing some of these other night sky photography, do you have a go-to lookout or point you like to frequent? You know, I, I, there's so many here and everyone looks at it at a different place. Um, my, my favorite is out at Mather Point. Uh, it's just, it's the iconic view of the canyon and you've got the Milky Way rising off to the east. You've got the crescent moon setting off to the west. Uh, there's the North Star directly across the canyon towards the North Rim and yeah, the stars overhead. Uh, what more could you possibly want? And this question came from Trish and she was curious, anywhere on the planet that you would uh, maybe have not been yet that you would want to go to experience the night sky, what's maybe on your bucket list? Oh, oh my. Okay, so the, the Southern Hemisphere. When you travel south of the equator, the skies that we see here in the Northern Hemisphere, they all disappear over the Northern horizon and brand new stars come up in the south. And the, the part of the Milky Way that's the brightest towards the center of our galaxy, well, here in the Northern Hemisphere, it's always low to the south. And think about like the sun. You know, the sun when it's high overhead is blinding, but the sun, when it gets low to the horizon, becomes dim. Well, it's the same thing with our Milky Way. That center of our galaxy, low on the horizon, is dim here in the north. But if you travel to the southern hemisphere, it moves to high overhead. And that center of our galaxy will be so bright, you can see your own shadow cast by the light of a hundred billion stars on the ground beneath you. So where I would love to go would be the Atacama Desert in Chile, where you're, you're up super high, very little atmosphere above you, no moisture at all, one of the driest places on Earth, and there's the least amount of sky between you and the stars, and that's, that's what I'd love to see. You've sold me, it's on my bucket list now too. That sounds incredible. And anything else you wanna share in terms of what you're excited about for your residency here or how you'll take some of the skills from your residency and apply it to kind of the next phase after. So one of the things I'm, I'm looking to do is really explore the, the artwork side of the astronomy while I'm here. And so while I'm, I'm taking a lot of photographs, uh, the thing that I've, I've really become known for is my Half the Park is After Dark posters that are in the old historical WPA style. Uh, the, that See America posters of the 1930s. And so I've got a series called See the Milky Way. Parks all across the country. But now I'm looking forward to creating something new here at Grand Canyon. Now that I've got the time to really explore and experience the night sky, I want to do something special and different. And so that's, that's what I'm hoping to do. And I'm, I'm hoping to be able to unveil it for our, our July 13th Facebook Live. So, um, yeah. So again, so, for, oh, sorry. So, so, so tune in then, yeah. I was just gonna say, if you guys missed out at the beginning, we're gonna be back with Tyler at noon on July 13th, and we'll learn a little bit more about what he's done during his residency here, and then unveil some cool new stuff. So hopefully you guys can join us then. We'll post it to our page, so if you can't watch it live, you can go back and watch the recording of it. And Tyler, it's just been such a pleasure. Thank you for doing this interview oh, with us today. It's been lovely. Thank you so much for having me. This, this really is the experience of a lifetime for me. And again, if you guys, um, Follow along, Tyler, and it was Space Art. Space Art Travel Bureau. Perfect.
perfect. Um, he's been posting about kind of some daily adventures and see some of his own personal reflections on it. We'll be continuing to share updates about Tyler's journey. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug him because we always like to end with a view of the canyon. So I'm gonna walk over to the rim so that you guys can see it. Okay, hopefully you guys can still hear me okay. Sorry, it's gonna be a little bumpy. So again, we are just, Bird Camp's Visitor Center was right there. And then we're walking up to the rim. So it is warm today. If you guys are planning a visit, please make sure that you recreate responsibly. Um, bring salty snacks, electrolyte waters, because we're expecting temperatures to climb again this weekend. So I'm Melissa Ojeda. I'm on the other end. Thank you guys for tuning in to another fantastic Facebook Live, and we'll see you back on July 13th.